As always, please pause the video before moving on. What we want to take note of in order to solve this question is that as the box slides from this point up to this point here, its total mechanical energy is conserved. We know that because the track is stated to be frictionless. So let's write down the conservation of mechanical energy principle. Now here we have the two main forms of mechanical energy. We have the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy. We have subscripts I to represent the initial quantities and then F to represent the final quantities. We note that this line right here can be considered to be ground level. And so since the object starts at this ground level, its initial gravitational potential energy will be zero. And then as it sort of dips into this valley and then rises upward right before it hits the rough patch, we can see that it has climbed a height of h relative to where it started. The question stated that that height is 1.1 meters, so we'll be plugging that in. Why don't we go ahead and replace each of these three expressions with their corresponding representations. Mass appears in all the terms of the equation, so it can be eliminated. And then we can substitute in known values. The question stated the initial velocity. We know g is 9.8. We've already noted that the height, y, that the object has risen is 1.1. What we can do is solve for the final velocity. So there are the known values substitute in. And when we solve for the final speed, we should get 3.8 meters per second. That is the speed of the box right before it hits the rough patch. Now it turns out that that final speed during the course of its motion along the frictionless track will become the initial speed as it travels across the rough patch. So we can now turn to sort of the next phase of the problem and state that the initial velocity during that phase will be the 3.8 meters per second that we just found. Now, this is a friction surface, so the conservation of mechanical energy principle really won't apply, so we're gonna to have to make an adjustment. And that adjustment applies when there is friction, as we have when the object travels across that rough patch. We almost have the same equation as the conservation of mechanical energy, but when friction is present, we have to add this extra term right here. Now this represents thermal energy. As the block slides across that rough patch, the friction is going to cause some thermal energy. It's basically heating up the surface and the block as the block slides along that surface. Now let's notice as the block slides across that surface, its height is not changing. So there's not going to be any gravitational potential energy at play here. We also note that as the block slides across, it's eventually going to stop at this point right here. So in other words, the final speed is going to equal zero meters per second. So that will eliminate this term. Now all we have to do is replace kinetic energy with its representation and then this thermal energy with its representation. So here is the thermal energy expression. It includes the kinetic frictional force and then the distance across which the object slides. And this is indeed what we're trying to find right here. The kinetic frictional force can be replaced with the expression normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's make that replacement. But then we also want to note that the normal force is going to equal mg. Consider the box as it's sliding across the surface. It has a gravitational force of mg pointing down, and then the ground is pushing back up on the box. We call that the normal force. Those two forces are equal in magnitude, so we can replace the normal force in the equation with mg. Now mass appears in both terms of the equation, so we can eliminate it. We were given the coefficient of kinetic friction in the question. G, of course, is 9.8. Remember, the initial velocity in this case was the final velocity as the object had slid across that frictionless surface and got to this point right here. And we had found that velocity. It turned out to be 3.8 meters per second. So let's plug in all the known values. And when we solve for D, we should get 1.2 meters. And that's going to represent the distance that the box slides across the rough patch before it is brought to rest.